afternoon. I am Alyssa Bonney. I'm an engagement manager and employer brand strategist at Exactwio. And today I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Courtney Rune from Inspire Brands. I had the pleasure of working with Courtney and her team um, last year to help build and activate the employer brand for what was previously known as Duncan Brands, now a part of Inspire Brands. Today, we're going to be talking about what that experience was like, the process that we took, um, and some of the things that she did in order to get buy-in internally, um, how she's collaborated with her team to make the brand what it is. Um, but before we get started, um, Courtney, can you share a little bit about your background and your role at Inspire Brands? Absolutely. So hi, I'm Courtney Roon. I head up employer brand here at Legacy Duncan Brands, now part of the Inspire Brands family. I've been with the brand for about three and a half years and previously led the talent acquisition function at Ocean Spray Cranberries. I am very happy to be here. Thanks, Courtney. Excited to share all of our um, content today with the audience. So can you take us back in time um, and just share what was happening with the organization that led to the decision to invest in employer brand? Absolutely. So I'll share something that the audience may not know, and that is that Duncan and Baskin restaurants are 100% franchisee owned. And what that means is that our team from a talent perspective does not recruit or hire for the restaurants. And that being said, our team is really small. We're a team of five. I always say small, but mighty. And we support the shared services functions. So when you think of digital marketing, IT, finance, uh, legal, those are the functions that we primarily support. And so if you go back to 2017, 2018, uh, a new head of talent acquisition started at Duncan, Wendy Manganaro, and she really saw a need to focus on employer brand. At the time, like many organizations, the sole focus was to recruit and hire the best talent into the organization. And there wasn't a resource at the time to really focus on employer brand and filling the top of the funnel. So Wendy and I had previously worked together uh, for several years and she gave me a call and we had this conversation and I saw it as such a wonderful opportunity to join two brands that I'm so incredibly passionate about, but also to build something from the ground up. And that's really in my wheelhouse. That's great. What an exciting opportunity. Okay. So you joined Duncan Brands. Um, can you talk a little bit about the team in addition to you and Wendy that was a part of building the brand? How, how did you work together and who were the, the teams that were involved? Yeah, so it was really a team effort. Um, while it started with Wendy and I kind of in a conference room, putting all of our ideas and thoughts on paper, it really required us to engage our internal stakeholders. And so we started the process by really educating um, folks around what employer brand is, why it's important, how it was going to better position us in the market to attract talent. And once we did that, we started to slowly see the stakeholders um, kind of coming together. And that would be, you know, everyone from corporate communications to marketing to our executive team members, our CHRO, our CEO, our COO, et cetera. Um, our legal friends. So it really was a team effort. Everybody came together and was involved in every step of the process and helped us bring it across the finish line. Yeah, it's so important to have the support of all of those different teams in order to really have a strong employer brand um, because you will rely on so many of those different individuals when it comes time to activating the brand. That's great. Absolutely. I, you know, I'll actually add, um, even now as our employer brand is kind of up and running, we are constantly working on our content strategy and I partner really closely with our corporate communications team and without them, none of that would be possible. Yeah, that's fantastic. So in addition to the team internally, um, you also knew that you needed to have a partner to help get this project really off the ground and to make it what it became. Um, and that was where we come in. Um, so you selected Exactwio. Can you talk a little bit about the process that you went through to consider different partners and ultimately um, choosing one? 
Yeah. So, you know, when I first started at Duncan, I, I didn't have the internal relationships. I was brand new. The function was new. We had a very lean budget. Um, so there were a lot of things kind of working against us and I, um, I knew we needed a partner. And so I reached out to my friends in the EB community to understand, you know, who were they working with? What did they like? What did they dislike? I feel like that is the best way to vet any partner is to hear directly from your peers to understand their experiences. And so about four or five different um, consulting uh, agencies were presented to me. I reached out to them all. I talked to them. And it I was super lucky because at the end of the day, Exacquia was a no-brainer for us. I knew from the very beginning, talking to Susan at Exacquia, talking to you, that you guys would be the, the best choice for us. And um, two years later, I still feel the same. Thanks, Courtney. We've loved being a part of your employer brand journey. And um, it's just been such a fun brand to work on. And who doesn't love coffee, donuts, ice cream, all that fun stuff. But um, all joking aside, it, it really is um, important to make sure that the partner that you select is the right one for your organization. All right, so let's shift gears and talk a little bit about our approach. So at Exacquio, um, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is the fact that everything that we do is bespoke. Um, but that said, one thing that is core to all of uh, our engagements and all of the work that we do is research. Um, so for Duncan, that's where we started. Um, we started with research with employees from all different parts of the organization, um, different levels. So we spoke to different employees of different tenure, um, to really understand what it was about the Duncan employment experience that they were living every day. We also took a look at what people were seeing online about Duncan's employment experience on places like Glassdoor and Indeed to get another perspective too. And we pulled that into the brand as well. And then finally, um, we did a competitive analysis of talent competitors to see what they were saying and doing when it comes to recruitment marketing, marketing and employer brand to see where there was a lot of noise um, and where there was white space for Duncan to really be authentic um, and also differentiated from those talent competitors. So we took all of that research um, as the foundation to build the brand architecture in phase two. So things like the EVP, um, the a summary of the employment experience that is shared and in common across all of those employees that we spoke with. And then we also built the brand pillars. So for Duncan, there are three brand pillars. Um, and that those are the core attributes of the employment experience that you can hang your hat on. They also are what's pulled forward in phase three, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Brand positioning, this is where we used what we learned about talent competitors to really see where Duncan could stand out um, and, and still be true to the employment experience, but have a, a different um, way to go to market. And then finally, the brand line. So for Duncan, this is fueled by you. Um, it has a, a strong connection to the consumer brand. Um, but that idea there being a way to anchor all of the creative, the messaging and the activation moving forward. Then in phase three, we started with building the creative direction. So we worked through creative concepting with our creative team and ultimately um, landed on some really beautiful creative that Courtney, you're gonna walk through in just a minute. Um, then we built out some messaging. So more candidate and employee facing messaging um, that could be used in all different scenarios for different candidates at different points in the candidate experience, as well as employees um, with a specific focus on employee advocacy, which we'll talk more about too. Then from there, we mapped out how we would launch and activate the brand. So the more tactical um, kind of execution looking at how to prioritize the channels that would have the most um, impact and what was most feasible for the team, as well as some kind of big sky ideas too. And then the last two, um, Courtney and her team really took the lead on and that's the content strategy and employee advocacy program. So that's a lot that we covered in really a short amount of time um, as we were working together. 
Um, as you look back, Courtney, are there any parts of the process that stood out to you? Yes. So while every part of this process was essential to get us to where we are today, there are a few things that stand out. And I'll start with the fact that we were able to really bring the employee voice forward as part of the research phase in this project. And it was important to us that we really heard directly from our employees what their employee experience is like. And so, you know, it became immediately apparent that our employees love working for Duncan and Baskin. And Alyssa, you said it best. You described it as our employees wearing their employment like a badge of honor. They absolutely love working for Duncan. They love talking about working for Duncan, whether it's Sunday mornings at the soccer field or wearing their Duncan gear out in the community. And so it was such a great opportunity for us to hear directly from our employees what was working, but then also what areas of opportunity we had as well. And we were able to share all of this with our leadership team, which really helped us further our goal of making Duncan the best possible place to work. Um, in addition, I would say the content strategy and the employee advocacy program were really key in making this successful. So, you know, towards the end of kind of aligning on the brand pillars and the, the, the brand guidelines um, and the creative, we developed a one year long content strategy. And we did that by looking at all the message map framework that was developed. How are we going to position ourselves in the market? What were the areas of opportunity? Where could we stand out and differentiate? What platform platforms were we going to be on, um, how we were going to activate on social media. So there was quite a bit of work that went into developing the content strategy, but I'm happy to say once we put in that kind of initial foundational work, it's been a little bit easier to maintain going forward now that we know kind of where we're going to be active and how we're going to communicate with our target audience. And then finally, I would say the employee advocacy program. So employee advocacy is something I am incredibly passionate about. I could talk about it all day. Um, and I'm so excited that we were able to launch a pilot program in 2020. And so we partnered with Hootsuite and their Amplify platform. And basically what it is, is it's an app that our employees download on their phones and it allows us to push content directly to them for them to share on their social media networks. And then they can also push content back to us so that we can see their employee experience through their own eyes. Um, and that helps us as well build out our content strategy. And so as with many things, COVID didn't quite allow us to launch the way that we had thought we would. All of our employees are remote. We're not in the office. There's not as many opportunities to create content, but this program has been wildly successful. So even through all of that, um, within seven months with 45 employees, we were able to reach over 2 million people just through the advocacy platform in addition to all of our owned channels. So again, super passionate about the advocacy program. It's helped tremendously with our EVP activation, but also with employees employee engagement. That's amazing. That is so cool. Um, can you share some examples of the content that has been shared by employees? Absolutely. So here's a couple examples um, that we put together. And it's everything from a day in the life of working at Duncan Brands to sharing content that we put out on our careers blog, our lead summit, which is our annual learning and development week that we have. And so it really allows our employees to kind of put their stamp on their experience and push it out and share the word as to why Duncan is such a great place to work. Yeah, that's fantastic. And for you being a, a lean team to have that content from employees to help power the, the content machine, that's, that's awesome. Okay, so in addition to employee advocacy and the content strategy, what other ways did you plan to activate the brand? Yeah, so Alyssa, as you know, we had a really robust activation plan. We, our goal was to start internally and then to launch externally. And then COVID happened and our plans completely changed and we had to pivot. And I think we're all used to that. Um, and so we didn't quite get to activate the way we had originally planned. Uh, we were able to do what I'll call a soft launch 
where we started to infuse the messaging from the brand pillars into our internal communications, our external communications. We started to put the creative out on social, out on our careers blog. If we were highlighting different employees, we would utilize that creative. Um, we would also um, make it visible on our career site. So while we weren't quite able to, to kind of pull it all the way through the way we had originally intended, we were able to bring it forward. And I'm super excited that we got to where we are today. Yeah, of course, you know, the big splashy campaign is, is exciting, but I love that you're able to still launch in the key channels that matter most to you and, and where you have the resources. So it's, that's great that you were able to launch still last year. Yeah, so I'll share a couple examples of the creative um, to kind of share where we landed. This is our fueled by you um, where statement was what we like to call it. And it really allows us to identify specific moments in time in our organization where important events happen, all fueled by our employees. So in this particular um, creative uh, picture, you'll see in the breakout area where we decided foam cups were a thing of a past all fueled by you. Um, another example here, as part of our careers blog, we highlighted a program called DBI Gigs, and it was really an internal temporary assignment program that we launched through COVID to help apply business resources where we needed the most. And we were able to use the Fueled by You Creative to talk about where that idea got brought to life. So in the HR meeting room where we met challenges with opportunities, Fueled by You. And what I really love about the creative is the beautiful colors. It's incredibly eye-catching, um, everything about it. I just love where we landed. These are two examples that we used on our careers blog with employee spotlights as well. And really cool that you're able to still make it work during COVID um, with some of the challenges with working from home and things like that that have come up. Um, that's fantastic that you were able to move forward with it. All right, so um, looking ahead to the new year, what's next for, for you in 2021? Yeah, great question. So Duncan uh, and Baskin were acquired by Inspire Brands in December of last year. And so while what's next is a little bit unknown, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. We've already started conversations with the Inspire team, bringing all the creative minds to the table, talking about what we've done, talking about what they've done. Um, and like I said, I just, I think there's so much opportunity for us to learn from each other and develop a plan going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is an exciting uh, outlook for the year ahead, for sure. Um, all right, last question um, before we get into some fun questions. Um, not that these aren't fun too, um, but a little bit more personal. So lastly, um, what pearls of wisdom would you share with someone who is looking to build an authentic employer brand? Yeah, so I thought a lot about this question because Alyssa, as you know, there were so many lessons learned as we went through this process. And I'll say the two things that really stood out to me would be number one, just start by getting your plan and your ideas on paper. Know that this is going to change, um, but it's important to bring along your internal stakeholders and talk to them about employer branding, why it's important, how it's going to position your organization to meet its business goals. Um, and secondly, I would say choosing a partner that works well with you. So every organization is different. They're at different places in their journey. You know best what your process is going to be like and what your challenges are going to be. And so identifying a partner that can really meet you where you're at and be flexible and have a seat at the table with you along this journey, I think really would make or break um, the experience. So those would be my two, my two pieces of advice. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. So we'll jump into a lightning round of a couple questions um, before we take questions from the audience during the live session. All right. So Courtney um, took some inspiration from some of the questions that you ask your employees on the careers blog. Um, first one, what are you drinking? A medium iced coffee, extra milk only every day. Mm. Sounds great. What are you scooping? Mom is making cookies because there's nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that one, but that'll be next on my list to try. What was your first job? 
Oh, my first job. So back in high school, I actually started at McDonald's. It was right across the street from my high school and I was saving up to buy my first car. So it was easy for me to walk across the street um, and work there. And then I was there for about a year. And then I went to Kohl's because I wanted to be able to take advantage of the employee discount program and buy myself new clothes. For sure. Um, okay. Working from home, what have you learned is your work from home must have? Coffee every day, <laughs> Dunkin' coffee. So, um, as part of working for the brand, we do have an employee discount program where we get discounted coffee. And so I could not imagine as a family of soon to be five, uh, operating without my morning cup of coffee. So that is essential. And that's if I'm working from home or in the office, either way. <laughs> That is such a nice perk. All right. Um, favorite Netflix, Hulu, Amazon series that you've recently binged? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I've watched several uh, through the pandemic. Um, I would say Virgin River would have to be my favorite right now. It was just such a great story. And I'm secretly sitting here waiting, hoping season three comes about soon. Me too. I definitely love that one. And I think it came out Black Friday, um, so it was a perfect uh, way to end uh, the Thanksgiving week. All right, last question. What's the last thing that you bought? The last thing that I bought, um, groceries for my family. My family, you know, we're a family of five. Uh, we go through a ton. And so I find myself at least twice a week at the supermarket. I know it's not super exciting, but that's the last thing I bought was a cart full it of groceries. Essential. I know. <laughs> I've got that on my to-do list for today too. Great. Well, thank you so much, Courtney. Um, now we'll answer a few questions from the Q&A chat box. 